Hey there guys, we're taking a look at Halo 2 Anniversary Edition running on the AMD Ryzen 5 5500U. Now the game is currently running with the original graphics settings at the stock 15 watt TDP. And this is running on the AMD 22.7.1 drivers, which are as of the time of making this video, the latest beta drivers. And they do include the DirectX 11 and OpenGL performance uplifts. So the performance that you see here might not be exactly representative of what you would get if you're not on those drivers. With that said though, the level of performance that we're getting here at the stock 15 watt TDP is a little disappointing, specifically in the 1% lows. The averages being 45 are acceptable, but it's the fact that the 1% lows are dipping below 30 that makes the overall experience really rough. If you're someone that's used to playing Halo with a controller and that's what you plan on doing, you might be able to get away with playing like this, but at least with a mouse and keyboard, this felt really Really, really rough to play specifically you'll see that the frame times kind of just spike up and down depending on where i'm looking that can make the game feel like it has almost a weird like acceleration to it where some moments you'll be turning a little slower than others so overall not a very consistent or enjoyable experience if you're really desperate to run this at the full 1080p resolution at the stock tdp then i guess you could consider this to be passable i mean i've played games at worse settings for sure but it's not hard to improve from where we're at here and of course the two routes that we can go for is of course raising the tdp or dropping the resolution so let's see what raising the tdp up to 25 watts ends up doing to the overall performance you'll see here that raising the tdp up to 25 watts ends up giving us a uplift in the one percent lows that overall makes the experience far better especially now that our averages are in the lower to mid 50 range really just having the one percent lows be above 30 is already great but the fact that it's reaching up into the 40 range means that we're having a very smooth experience here so if you're on a system that actually lets you raise the tdp up to 25 watts and you don't get into high temperatures this is really the recommended way to go if you want to play at the full 1080p resolution now it's not completely perfect but at least on this laptop in particular since it has a free sync display these fluctuations are more than enough with to be within the free sync range and it looks perfectly fine really it actually just just looks worse in video than it really does playing on the actual monitor itself or not really monitor but the display of the laptop itself really overall i'm happy to see that we're getting really playable performance by just raising the tdp because i was worried just going off of the performance of the 15 watt tdp that this was going to end up being a rough experience but just raising that tdp already netted us enough of a gain that this became a very playable experience of course we can push it a little further than this going for a full 30 watt tdp here is giving us some pretty decent results where we're getting very very close to a 60 fps average and our one percent lows are pretty much sticking consistently within the 40 range and are no longer touching anywhere near 30 and you'll see that the frame times are very smooth and consistent overall like this there will still be an occasional spike here and there but that really seems to be just something that is inherent to the chip itself it's just one of the limitations of just using low-end hardware overall but it really is not enough to ruin the overall experience experience and it is a very enjoyable time of course we're still not hitting a perfect 60 fps average but since we're still within the free sync range i really don't think that it's that necessary of course not all systems are going to be able to run at the full 30 watt tdp and you'll see that even the system that i'm on right now is reaching temperatures that i personally would not want to game at so our only other recourse here is to drop the resolution so we can go into the settings and drop the resolution slider down to 80 percent which is approximately around what 900p would be and you'll see here that what that does to the performance at the stock 15 watt tdp is that we're actually getting a pretty playable experience overall our one percent lows are staying within the 30 range essentially the mid 30s and our averages are still within a very acceptable range where it's just shy of 50. There will be of course consistent drops below that but it's going to essentially hover around that range and it's going to be a very enjoyable experience. Overall I'm happy to see that just dropping the resolution a little bit like
like that ends up actually netting us a pretty solid gain. Now, of course, raising the TDP up to 25 watts at the 80% resolution actually ends up netting us a nice performance gain where our averages are now more than comfortably above 60 and our 1% lows aren't seeing as big of an uplift as we would have liked to have seen, but it's still within a perfectly acceptable range and it's going to be a very enjoyable gaming experience. And depending on the areas that you're at on the actual map, it can actually go all the way up into the 50 to 60 FPS range. So really overall, 1% lows are not going to be anything that you're, you're going to need to worry about at these settings. Everything ran perfectly fine. It was a really enjoyable experience. And overall, I would really suggest that if you're looking to have a rock solid ultra smooth gaming experience and you don't mind dropping the resolution this is a really really solid way to go about things because you minimize any potential performance issues that you might have in extremely heavy areas but really you can also get away with playing the game at the full resolution just expect a little bit worse performance than this but it might just be imperceivable to you while you're playing the game i think a good piece of advice in general is to maybe not keep an fps counter open all the time when you're playing games so that you just end up kind of forgetting the fact that maybe things aren't hitting these perfect arbitrary numbers that you have in your head but if the gaming experience is still enjoyable what did it matter and of course, to round things out, we're going to be looking at it running at the 30 watt TDP with the 80% resolution scaling. And the level of performance that we're getting here is really rock solid, comfortably above 60 all the time. 1% lows getting very, very close to the 50 range. And depending on the exact scenery, it will actually get there or be even slightly higher. There are a lot of sections of this game that really have significantly higher performance than others just because of the fact that it'll be smaller interior your areas where there's less things that need to be rendered so really it's these open situations that are the most demanding overall and so the fact that it's doing really well here pretty much lets us know that we're going to have a rock solid experience the entirety of the time of course you really need to be, be sure that you're on a system that can handle this level of tdp going through it because if you're running at degrees up into the 90s or even the mid 80s like where i'm at right now it's just not good temperatures to be putting low end hardware through these things aren't really designed to run at these temperatures so you can actually risk damaging your hardware like this in the long term i'm not going to say that you playing like this once or twice is going to end up killing the hardware but if you do it consistently enough it can actually shorten the lifespan of a lot of pieces of hardware so it's just something to think about when you're looking at the level of performance that you can get out of this it might be appealing but you are running the risk of losing your hardware here and of course if you want to play with the original graphics well you can just go right ahead and do that and get some amazing performance at the stock tdp i really don't think that the upgraded graphics are that worth it but personally i am nostalgic for the old style so i can understand if you look at this and you just think that this looks too bad to actually want to play but the level of performance that you're getting is pretty incredible and you're going to be able to have a really really enjoyable time playing like this so it really is just up to you on whether or not the new graphics are worth it to you personally i've played halo 2 enough that i can more than happily play with these graphics the fact that i'm able to at least play the game at such a high refresh rate already to me feels far more next gen than just playing with better graphics but a relatively low fps but anyways i hope you found this video useful if you did be sure to subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one